Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I have a hopefully short video today on some of my uh, test methodologies for uh, testing interference in cables, uh, specifically for mains uh, interference. If you look at the uh, you know, uh, marketing material for a lot of interconnect cables or speaker cables, they claim how much noise immunity they have, and as a result, that opens up the sound and back darker backgrounds and all that stuff. Of course, they never, sorry about the noise, <laughs> power cable fell off that I need for the demo. At any rate, uh, they, uh, of course, they don't show you any measurements, uh, nor are there any in industry standard measurements for uh, for that kind of interference. Uh, frankly, as you probably know, it's mostly voodoo and nonsense. So it's not like a whole bunch of proper engineers are going to sit around and say, how do we test that? Um, so I have to come up with my own methods of testing these claims. And one of the methods I use is very simple. And let me take up this uh, AC cable. And uh, I take an AC cable and bring it near an uh, interconnect cable. And I've done this test with... Uh, uh, some expensive cables, and when I do this, it actually picks up interference from this. And um, when I do it on, you know, this cheap Amazon Basics cable that I'll show you in a second, it doesn't do that. So uh, it is an effective test I've developed. It's ad hoc, you know. It's but then again, how you lay your AC cables and you know interconnects at your home is also ad hoc. And so it it shows us stuff. If if a cable that claims to have less interference actually has more then we know that the testing method is, is effective. I use other methods, sometimes I hook up a transformer to this, sometimes I loop this around the other wire. Uh, I do enough things to get a rise out of a uh, cable, and if neither cable shows it, then I dish the test. Recently, this has come up, people saying, whoa, this, this is not causing any interference. Uh, even though the other side's plugged into AC, this side is not plugged to plugged into anything. There's no current flowing, and therefore, there can't be any interference. So let me show you that uh, that, that patent is false. I'm going to use what is called a, a non-contact voltage tester, uh, or NCV, that electricians use. And look at what happens as I get close to this cable. It starts to beep I'm an inch away, two or three centimeters away, and it's already detecting it. And, and uh, when I go away, it goes away, and when I get close, it picks it up again. So clearly something's happening, and it's going through air, and it's getting coupled into this thing. Now, what is this, and how does it work? Uh, if you look at the end, all you see is, uh, well, I don't know if you can see, but all you see is this little piece of metal in there, and there's nothing else, just that piece of metal and goes inside and there's an amplifier circuit that amplifies the voltage that's coming across from this. And uh, um, the question is then, how does a circuit get formed? So let's start at the beginning. Uh, when I bring this near here, an actually interesting thing is happening. There's metal, there's wire conductors in here, right? They're metal and there's metal in here. And when I bring the two together, they form what is called a capacitor. A capacitor is an electric electronic device that uh, likes AC but doesn't like DC. So if I bring this next to a battery, it does nothing. But uh, if I bring it next to this other wire, a capacitor is formed, and a capacitor will then carry on the AC waveform that's on this into this device. Now, that AC waveform is very weak, and hence the amplifiers that have to be in here. But your audio devices also have amplification in them. So, you know, that gain also exists in your audio products. Now, as I bring this, this is not the end of the story. So now we have a capacitor, which means some amount of this voltage is going to transfer to this. But if you have a circuit with one side of it open, it does nothing. Because you have to complete the circuit. The light bulb does not come on if you just connect one side of it to a power source. It needs to have the other side also plugged in. So what then happens is that it, it's going through my body. My body actually has a certain impedance. And then my body couples to ground. And that ground travels all the way back to the uh, electrical meter where it uh, completes the circuit. So the hot wire goes through this as a, via a capacitor, invisible capacitor, and a circuit is uh, completed. Now, this is an electronic uh, explanation. There's also electromagnetic field uh, explanation in that um, this is generating both uh, electrical radiation and magnetic radiation, the electromagnetic field, we call it. And the electric field is created via uh, voltage. 
magnetic field is created via current. So the fact that this is not carrying current right now, actually, yeah, it is carrying a little bit of current, but let's put that aside. It, the fact that it's, there's no current, it doesn't matter, it's not material because the, the electric field is active and that capacitor is able to pick that up and convey it into this, or in field theory, this is actually coupling to this. And uh, so the notion that this test is useless doesn't work because it obviously, I just showed you how there is something coming off of this cable without it, the, this end hooked up to something. The other end is of course very important, it's hooked up to an AC outlet. I said that there is actually a little bit of current going on because if you look at the end of this uh, IC cable, you see that the two conductors are in here and in between them there's an insulator and that, that again forms a capacitor. And that capacitor actually completes a circuit from here to here. And so there's a little bit of current is also uh, generated uh, or created in here. And so this is actually a closed loop. It has an impedance at 60 Hertz and harmonics and therefore current is actually in this cable. Now, as an aside, I went ahead and did that experiment on a forum where I put current through this and same results came out. That just makes things you know, a little bit worse. But in general, just don't think because something's invisible or to lay intuition is there's nothing here. It's just a disconnected cable. No, it's not a disconnected cable. It's connected over there and it has one end of a, one leg of a capacitor waiting to couple into something else. So let me show you as a experiment what that looks like in, in audio applications and, <coughs> excuse me. So what I have in here is uh, Amazon Basics uh, interconnect. I've hooked it up to the input of the uh, analyzer and it's just dangling in the air. And for the same principles I just explained is actually picking up uh, mains interference. So let me get my cursor in here. Hopefully you can see. So in here we see the waveform that is picking up is about 60 Hertz. I'm holding it. So again, remember the circuits getting completed through my body to the chassis, uh, to the earth and going to the main, uh, to the uh, breaker panel. And we see that the dominant signal is 60 Hertz in here as indicated in here. So there's no question that this is picking up interference, AC interference with stuff just sitting around. Now, by the way, the same thing happens if you go back of your uh, power amplifier and you touch the input, you hear that hum and buzz. Again, you're completing a circuit through your body. Now, look at what happens if I take the red cable and I pick up my old AC cable and pay attention to the red signal on the right. Look at what happened there. Um, I'm just bringing it close to this guy. Notice that the red signal is now a lot stronger than the... Uh, uh, than the blue signal. So absolutely we're picking up interference and we're able to do it with a cable that's not hooked up to anything, is dangling in the air, but sure as heck is enough to give us about, a, I'd say 10 to 15 dB uh, coupling from this to this. Now, you might say, whoa, then I need those fancy cables. Well, maybe if they are designed properly and I'd be doing the opposite. But look at what happens when I plug this into the output of the analyzer the analyzer actually is not sending any signal, uh, but it has an impedance. In this case, I think it's 40, 20 ohm impedance. And the moment with, I do that, look at what happened to the FFT spectrum. Shrunk way down. You still see noise in here because the analyze, everything in the world has noise, but as it's below one microvolt of noise. So this is very, very small amount of noise. But important, if we look at the spectrum on the right, we don't see that main thing. And that's how you use your AC cables, right? You, hook them up to the input of your, uh, uh, to the output of your source device, which has a low impedance and a low impedance is the enemy of that uh, electric field that I was talking about because it shunts it basically and doesn't allow hardly any current to develop to get, uh, get amplified. Indeed, you know, I can, well, not very convenient, but I can put this next to this and you can see that it's not doing anything. So the notion that, you know, the test was done with the cable dangling in the air means nothing. It just shows, in a sense, a lack of understanding of electromagnetic fields 
And uh, uh, frankly, even engineers sometimes don't understand this. You know, we get taught all this stuff in school with no connection to reality. Nobody does the demonstration I just showed you. So you get, you suffer through all the math and proofs and everything and Maxwell equations and stuff, and you happily put it behind you unless you work in, in RF world. And then this stuff becomes mandatory that you, and you go back and learn it again, you know, because the first time you had no reason to remember it all, but the second time, you absolutely are motivated to learn it. So I actually can't even blame engineers for not understanding this concept and, and ridiculing it that, you know, an AC cable dangling in the air um, causes any problems. But if you've designed any audio equipment, you know how bad these things can be. You know, you get an AC cable next to some sensitive input signal and boom, you know, it picks up that whether that AC cable is energized with much current or not. And by the way, a lot of your source devices hardly consume any current. Uh, your CD player, power cord, you know, or CD player. In the old days when we had CD players, only 10, 20, 30 watts of power. The current is in milliamps. So, you know, it doesn't matter. And frankly, if you're going to try to sell cables, you don't want to dissuade people from thinking that, you know, cable that doesn't carry a lot of current is safe. You want to amp that up. So the notion that, People say, oh, you know, that was not a good test. Go buy my cables. It's like, no, no, no. You want to be behind me lining up saying there is interference. Of course, terrible for them is that I just demonstrated once I terminate the input, you know, the world's problems go away. Um, the other thing to know is that when you use unbalanced circuits, RCA circuits, um, in real systems uh, with, with multiple pieces in them, you almost always get mains interference in here, whether internally or externally. And the uh, good news is that at low frequencies, our threshold of hearing is very high. So even though every system practically with RCA connections has a ground loop or mains interference problems, 99.99% of people don't hear them because you know, we're just not sensitive to low frequencies. Otherwise, you know, in, uh, RCA connectors would have been outlawed decades back. So we get away with it uh, on that. So that's a side note. Hopefully you like this shorter video. Uh, let's see, it's 12 minutes still. And uh, I'll see you in a future one. I'll have a few more of these quickies uh, planned for other concepts similar to this. Okay, see you in a future one. Bye-bye.